let me just start by saying there's no way for me to talk about this without upsetting someone. The intent isn't to do so. Today, I'm going to talk about Otherkin. From the time I can recall my first memories, I always felt like I was different from most people. I've always had a hard time mainly with communicating my emotions and understanding people's idiosyncrasies. I've always felt like there is something about people that I just couldn't grasp. It's the way that they can talk to each other without really talking and seemingly understand each other. It's the way that everyone else seemed to follow a certain beat with their actions and their words and I always just felt offbeat, like I was in the way, and I was powerless to do anything about it. I always liked to roleplay, usually online. I would take part in online Dungeons & Dragons campaigns. I remember I was part of a Pokemon roleplay site, where it was structured like a game. And when I was about 14 and on one of these sites, I came across a group of roleplayers who would roleplay as dragons and wolves and other animals, and they called themselves Otherkin. I came to learn that they roleplayed as these animals because they felt a connection to them. And while the specifics differed from person to person, most of them held the belief that they were somehow the reincarnation of an animal or mythical creature. How can you be the reincarnation of a mythical creature? Well, no one really knew for sure, but there were various theories. Maybe dragons and griffins existed on another planet. Maybe these creatures really did exist on Earth, but we just weren't aware of it. Maybe there's a spiritual realm that exists parallel to our realm, and they simply crossed over. The bottom line is, other can believe that they weren't human. And this offered me something, because my entire life, I also felt like I wasn't quite human. I felt so different and isolated and alone, and this really appealed to me. People had always told me that I was just socially awkward, but other can turn this disability into a strength. Instead of my social anxiety being a weakness, it was instead just something different about me. I came to be involved with the Otherkin community, and that's where my dragon avatar that you see now originated from. I came to love Otherkin and I considered myself one of them. I felt a deeper connection with these people who I met online than I felt for anyone I had met offline, including my own family. And my draconity, as I called it, was something I really believed in. To Otherkin, dreams often were seen as extremely important. People would say that they got their character design from how they looked in a dream. Or they would say that dreams they had were memories of their past lives. And I myself would often have dreams of being a dragon or just about dragons in general. And this only reinforced my belief that I was a dragon. But I started to notice something kind of wrong with the Otherkin community. A lot of Otherkin were depressed and easily angered. They were hypersensitive and talking to some of them was like walking on eggshells. Everything seemed to offend them. Especially if you ever questioned if their Otherkin identity was real. You had to be very careful of who you upset, because saying the wrong thing to the wrong person could be catastrophic. Especially the popular female artists. They were like queens, and they had a whole army of people who would harass you and add you to blacklist and try to hurt you any way they could if you upset their queen. It's probably starting to sound a bit like some other communities we know of. As I got older and became more and more skeptical of spirituality in general, I always wondered if this was really healthy. See, what I did, and I'm sure what many others did, is that we blamed our differences and problems on our spiritual side. If we had anger issues, it couldn't be helped, it was simply because we were part dragon. If we had problems talking to people, it didn't matter because we weren't human, so why did we even care what humans thought? This seemed counterintuitive to bettering oneself, and I often questioned it, but I started getting basically bullied off various websites for voicing my opinions and thoughts. And that's when I began to realize that while Otherkin didn't want to admit it, their beliefs were basically a religion. But it was an odd religion. There wasn't a code of conduct, there wasn't a heaven or hell, there wasn't an all-powerful being that they worshipped. But there was definitely an in-group, and you were part of that group based on faith in something spiritual. I have a hard time believing in anything spiritual or religious now, so I can't call myself Otherkin anymore. It's kind of funny because Otherkin led me to furries, and now I find a home with them. Furries still roleplay and generally seem to understand that same sort of social anxiety that I have. Something that people might not realize is that, while there is overlap with the groups, furries and otherkin don't always get along. Furries are generally really accepting of anyone who wants to join their community, but I think that otherkin are just a little bit too intense sometimes. I also find that many furries are atheist and will question spiritual beliefs, while otherkin are spiritual, and this creates a divide between the two communities. It's become sort of popular to call Otherkin crazy online. And I wanted to say that, while I don't identify as Otherkin anymore, I don't really think of Otherkin as crazy. I understand the reason why they believe the things they do. Really, they're just people with spiritual beliefs. If you aren't going to call a Buddhist crazy, then you can't really call Otherkin crazy. 
You can certainly call individuals crazy for doing crazy things, but you shouldn't judge a community based on those few people. I hope that this has allowed people to maybe have a better understanding of Otherkin, and at the same time, I hope I haven't upset any of my Otherkin viewers. So tell me what you think in the comments. Anyway, I'm Cothrix, and you have a wonderful day. So today's subscriber shoutout goes to Zulala, who does some really good tutorials, especially on how to make things like realistic looking tails and ears. So go check her out if you're interested.